Hey guys, it's Julianne from The Wink, and today I'm gonna to be going through how to get this everyday natural makeup look. This is something that I do almost every single day of the week, only varying by my lip colors, and that's about it. So these are the products that I reach for, and these are the steps that I do, so keep watching. So I'm gonna start out with a tinted moisturizer, kind of a light base. I'm not really into any bases that are too heavy. I like something that I feel like my skin can breathe. And so this Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue is a product that I've been really liking recently. Um, I feel like it's light enough that it shows my skin through the product and doesn't feel too caked on. So I like to apply this product with a beauty blender, of course. So just start by squeezing a bit onto the back of your hand and applying it with the Beauty Blender sponge. The Beauty Blender gives such a lovely finish on your skin, it's almost airbrushed, so you really can't go wrong. And I know I'm not the first beauty blogger who has waxed poetic about the Beauty Blender, but it really is one of a kind. So if you're on the fence about picking it up, I highly recommend it. My go-to concealer and one that I grab every single day is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is my just ride or die concealer product and I think the thing that I like the most about it is it works as kind of an under eye brightening concealer but it also works on any blemishes that you might have around your face. So typically I find that I'd have to use two formulas one for under eye brightening, one for concealing blemishes, but this actually, the color more than anything, works both ways on my face. Another good tidbit about these NARS face products, the concealers and the foundations are both meant to be applied with your fingers rather than a brush or a sponge. So pull it down in a V, pull it up on your cheekbone, and that is like an under eye concealing and highlighting all in one step. down the bridge of my nose and up a little bit on my forehead also acts as a highlighter. And a little bit on Cupid's bow and upper lip. So once concealer is applied and you have your highlight ready, um, it's time to go in with a contour. And I, instead of using a bronzer, I actually use this Sculpting Powder by Kevin O'Quinn. I find that the color is sort of a cool gray slate color, which works really well to create natural looking shadows in the hollows of my face, you know, under my cheekbones, under my jaw, on my temples, and around my hairline. Um, the color is just a lot more natural than most bronzers can look. And bronzer is one of those things that you have to get really right, otherwise it just looks really wrong. The orangey stripe on the cheekbone is not a good look for anyone. So I like to apply the Kevin O'Quinn Sculpting Powder with this Morphe angled brush. This is the Morphe E4 brush, which I find to just be the perfect size for fitting in right under my cheekbone. And I just apply this sculpting powder with a really light hand, pushing up. Never ever blend down when you're applying a contour color. Always blend up and into the cheek, up into the cheekbone. Another great tip is if you're looking for a lighter hand, hold at the very, very end of your brush so you're not too heavy handed with the application. Most of the time I'm half asleep when I'm putting my makeup on, so <laughs> I need stuff that's going to be easy and foolproof. You can already see the difference where I added that contour. See, the thing about foundation is it completely flattens out any natural contours that you might already have in your face. So that's why it's important to go back in with this contour shade and just add in a little bit just to give your face some definition and keep it from looking too one note. Next up is blush and I'm going to be using my favorite blush and one that I grab almost every day. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in Diffused Heat. So it's this really pretty marbleized hot coral color 
and I think it looks great on just a variety of skin tones. I'm going to be applying it again with the Morphe E4 brush. This brush is also a great shape to apply, apply blush. I like to apply blush just on the outsides of my cheek. Not so much like directly on the apple of my cheek. They always tell you that you should smile and then apply here. But if you do that, when you stop smiling, your blush ends up right about here which can age you more years than you would like. So what I like to do is apply it more towards the outer portion of my cheek and up towards my temple. And sweep it around in a C shape, just to, just to add a hint of color. The next essential step in my everyday makeup look are brows. And if you know me, you know I love a thick, full, structured brow. That's like my favorite thing. If I'm if I'm leaving the house with no other makeup on, I always do my brows before I leave just to give my face that polished look. So my go-to products for this structured brow look, my favorite look, are the Sephora Retractable Brow Pencil in the shade Midnight Brown, which is like a great ashy kind of neutral brown and if you check out my how to fill in your eyebrows tutorial which I will link in the description bar below you'll see my everyday brow routine so I like to draw a line underneath my brow starting with my arch and then going into the front I like to finish off my brow look with the Anastasia brow powder duo in medium brown and again, this is just one of my favorite brow products and one that I use and reach for every single day. So brows are done and it's time to move on to eyes. I like to use this Ipsy and NYX eyeshadow trio, which has a light taupe, a medium brown, and a matte black shade, which are just perfect for your everyday makeup look. I take a little bit of the taupe color on a fluffy brush and just sweep it all across my lid. Then I take some of that medium brown color and apply it to my crease. Just make sure you really take care to blend these colors and diffuse any harsh lines. Just back and forth with a windshield wiper motion across the lid will diffuse any harsh lines that you may make with the shadow. Finally take a little pencil brush and dip it into that matte, matte black just to create along the lash line and the illusion of thicker lashes. So not necessarily a dramatic graphic black line if, like if you were to use a liquid liner, but just something to create a, an illusion of fullness. Last step is that I curl my eyelashes and then apply mascara. As you know, I am loving the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. I think that it's lengthening in a way that no other mascara that I've tried is, and it's become my go-to favorite for my everyday mascara. The other thing I love about this mascara is that I can wear it on my bottom lashes and I don't end up with panda eyes at the end of the day. I know you girls can relate to that problem. I squeeze about 15 times on each eye, and that gives a lasting curl the whole day. And finally, I like to vary my lip colors on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm always switching up what color lipstick I wear. And so if you're looking for just a natural, neutral lip, 
My favorite is the Meet Matte Hues in the shade Committed by The Balm. And it's this matte liquid lipstick that sort of goes on almost like a mousse, but then it dries down to this really lovely matte finish. Um, and I'm really loving this color. It's a neutral pink and it just goes with everything. So that is what I will be wearing today. And that is it. That's the final makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. And if you're new, please subscribe. See you all soon. Bye.